The Raptors could be on the verge of making NBA history. Coach Nick Nurse's mid-series adjustments, Pascal Siakam's utter dominance, combined with the collective never-die mentality from Toronto's shorthanded seven-man rotation, has bothered the star-studded Sixers in their attempt to close out round one. Harden and Embiid are still very dangerous, and if Tobias Harris and Tyrese Maxey show up like they did in the first few games, this could be a wrap. But regardless, the Raps are proving with multiple young NBA champions and up-and-coming talents on the wing that they're going to be a competitive young group for many years to come. But without their all-star Fred Van Vliet for the rest of the series, can the Six become the first NBA city of all time to see their team overcome a 3-0 series deficit? My prediction is coming up. Right before that, just 10.1% of you watching right now are subscribed. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Whether it's staying in front of Tyrese Maxey and then collectively crowding the speedy point guard at the basket, rotating out like hell to Tobias Harris, or doubling Joel Embiid on defense and then attacking JoJo offensively as they did for six straight possessions in Game 5, Toronto's coaching staff has done an outstanding job at making changes to their game plan over the course of this first round battle, specifically after Game 2 in Philly. Since then, outside of 10 minutes, the Raptors have been leading for the last three games of this series, only losing the first of those on a game-winning dagger after a perfectly drawn-up play from Doc Rivers. Aside from that, the only coach of all time to have blown two 3-1 series leads has struggled to make a counterpunch after Nick Nurse's aforementioned adjustments. Since Game 3, the Sixers have really struggled to not only match the Raptors' effort, but factors that are less controllable in their size and athleticism. Toronto just looks bigger and better at the moment. After the Sixers made over 51% of their shots through the first three games, Toronto held Philly to 42.5% shooting in Game 4 and 38.3% shooting in Game 5. OG Ananobi, and specifically Pascal Siakam, are getting wide open driving lanes and are also easily getting to their hot spots and knocking down jumpers. That's something Philly is going to look to take away in Game 6. But as Nick Nurse mentioned in his pre-game interview for Game 5, one of these games, his team's going to get red hot from three-point range. That didn't even end up happening in Game 5, as the Raps made just eight of their 31 attempts from beyond the arc, yet their performance was still good enough to blow out Philadelphia on the road. Outside of Gary Trent Jr., every Raptor rotation player has a seven-foot-plus wingspan, collective length, which makes it overwhelming to score and protect the ball against. We saw what Coach Tricky Nicky did to Joel Embiid back in 2019, and these massive Raptor players in 2022 are executing the same back end of possession blitzes, hard doubles, and traps that Nurse drew up throughout Toronto's unforgettable championship run three years ago. After Embiid quote-unquote respectfully told him to stop complaining, Nick Nurse seemed to use that as fuel to his fire as the man's proving why he's the best coach in the NBA, a coach the LA Lakers can only dream of acquiring. Next, we'll break down the current face of the Raptor franchise in Pascal Siakam. From spicy dimes to find Chris Boucher in the paint, coast-to-coast -coast drives in transition through multiple Sixer defenders, or pull-up jump shots, which you can tell Siakam's endlessly worked on, Toronto's number one option followed up his 34-point performance in Game 4 by dropping 23-10-7 on 10-for-17 shooting from the field and 2-of-4 from distance. But... What does Siakam have in store for Game 6? That's the question. The Raptors have a great chance to force Game 7 if Pascal's asserting himself and setting up his teammates at the high level he showed over the past couple games. Meanwhile, despite playing on a bad ankle, which was stepped on by Embiid earlier in the series, the Rookie of the Year and Young Bones Scotty Barnes has inspirationally fought through grueling ankle pain and suited up for the teammates he's built up 100% chemistry with. Limping after Toronto forced Game 6 in Philly, Barnes was still able to give the Raps 12 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, and 4 steals. He was also a game 3rd best plus 13. Barnes changed the flow of the game with consecutive lob passes, but out of any play, the highlight of Game 5 was Scotty's anticipation to read the passing lanes and snatch the steal, 
followed by a moving behind the back dribble to shed Maxi and a pristine off-handed layup in traffic. Since returning in game four, Scotty's had the ultimate impact, displaying not only that he's deserved rookie of the year, but that he's one of the most impactful rookies in the history of our game. Now we're going to look at the X factors for Toronto heading into game six. The veteran-esque 23-year-old former Portland Trailblazer Gary Trent Jr. is the Raptors' one very high-volume deep-range marksman without Fred Van Fleet, and it's absolutely crucial for Toronto's chances that Gary shows up in Game 6 and potentially Game 7. The son of a former 10-year NBA veteran Gary Trent, Trent Jr. has at times resembled a poised and deadly sharpshooter who's been in the league for around the same amount of time that his dad played. OG Ananobi and Precious Achua are the other Toronto X Factors. OG needs to play like he did in the fourth quarter of Game 5, and Precious needs to shoot the ball with confidence from both the free throw line and from deep in front of the roaring home crowd. On the other side, this is the second straight year Joel Embiid has told his teammate to be more aggressive after doing the same last year with Ben Simmons, so the way in which Harden responds to that callout could determine the outcome of this series. Philly was lackadaisical in Game 5, and they nearly lost two games the last time they went through customs. From a Raptor fan's perspective, I've actually been most terrified of Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris going off, more than I've been afraid of Joel and James, which just goes to show you how Nick Nurse has neutralized those two over the past two games. To try and look at this from Philly's point of view, I agree with what Shaq said a few days ago about how you need to play with force in a closeout game. Games 4 and 5 have seen the Sixers just expect that Toronto is going to lay down, and Philly hasn't even come close to playing with the same edge they did in the opening two games. In a hostile environment on the road, this is going to either make or break two men who call themselves superstars in Joel Embiid and James Harden. I'll be in attendance and chanting defense, of course desperately wanting the Raps to force a Game 7, but no matter what the outcome of this game is, it'll be fascinating to see what happens with this hyped up Sixers duo. My prediction for Game 6 is a down to the wire battle because while the game to game adjustments between coach Nick Nurse and Doc Rivers have been night and day, the Sixers have the star power and veteran poise to compete on the road. I'm biased, but I have the Raptors leading for a lot of the game and holding on to win something like 114 to 111. In Game 7, I'm still picking my feisty Scotty B, spicy, and OG fueled raps to win as well because as a loyal supporter, I gotta stay positive. But whether it's Philly or Toronto, what happens for the rest of this thrilling series in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Soren Koskinen, who says the Pelicans did this all without Zion. Now, yes, Booker is out and he's not coming back for this series, but that shouldn't take away from what New Orleans has managed to do here. I do not think they'll win this series, but they made it far more of a fight than anyone could have thought. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. Deflo signing off.